All right, time for another podcast. I didn't do one. Well, I, here's the thing. I did a podcast. I recorded one last Thursday, but I never posted it. And so the thought occurred. I was like, well, why don't I just post that one uh, today? And then instead of doing one today, I can listen to the uh, Gilbert Gottfried podcast featuring Malcolm McDowell. Uh, but then I decided I want to record one today because I want to. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to slide off. I don't want to backslide. I don't want to slack off. And I want. Uh, and my thinking is now not to release that other podcast because it's now you know three days old. Whereas uh, this podcast now is uh, more current. And I can uh, keep you up to date with, uh, we can be more up to date with what's going on with my life. Namely, that my uh, overactive bladder seems to be getting a little bit worse. Uh, Just that I'm peeing every 15 seconds. And uh, uh, I uh, don't know what to do about that other than I'm told I should not... uh, drink caffeine, but I need to drink caffeine. So, uh, and and I'm also trying to uh, self-diagnose. I'm not, I can't go to the same doctor anymore because I don't have the health insurance I had before. So, uh, that's a thing too. And, and I, I forgot to put in my, my daily Starbucks order, which, uh, I'm going to try to do while I'm doing the podcast. Hopefully that won't disrupt anything. Let's see. I get the uh, the protein box, which includes the uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich, the Emperor's Cloud hot tea, and the egg whites. I'm trying to do this while driving and doing a podcast. Perfect. Looks like the order has gone through. And the podcast is continuing. And I've managed now to set myself up for a delightful morning breakfast. Starbucks. Because we're all that's left. (laughs) Oh, man. That could be the... uh, That might be some business mottos. The rate we're going. (laughs) Starbucks! There's nothing else. Literally. There aren't any more countries. We don't even need to make commercials. Because there aren't any other businesses. There's just five Starbucks. One baby seal. A half-dead rhinoceros and 48 people. And that's all that's left on Earth. So, Starbucks, where else are you going to go? That's like a Mad Max-era television commercial. Starbucks, does anyone even own a TV anymore? Is anyone watching this? Starbucks. That, by the way, does not mean to be a critique of Starbucks, per se. Uh, I enjoy Starbucks. It's more a critique of the human race. Just so we're clear on who the the victim choice is in that particular uh, riff right there. Uh, I've been really depressed. Very depressed. And my mom called and said, How you doing? And I I, uh, confessed that I... I lied. I, you know, I, I tried to, well, yeah, I did. I, you know, I, I just, I tried to, uh, I, you know, I said I was doing fine and I'm not, I'm really not doing fine. Or I said I was, you know, doing okay. And, uh, I am, uh, depressed. I am depressed. Why is this guy walking in the middle of the street like this? Ah, 
pedestrians. Am I right, ladies? Uh, but back to the depression. Oh, and I'll get back to the depression in a second. But, you know, I hear wonderful things about the Hyundais. I really do. But can I just say, I drove, I'm driving past a Hyundai that it's a particular shade of blue that's just... It's it's the it, the royal and the royal blue is too royal. It's not it's not dark blue enough. I prefer dark blue. I like my blue with even more depression in it. Okay, so back to the depression. Uh, I'm just really sad because I don't uh, I don't feel like I'm ever going to be in a relationship. I just I feel like it's never going to happen. Uh, and, uh, and I totally, you know, I totally feel out of control and I don't want to hear, Oh, you need to go on the, I don't want to go on the dating website. I don't want to do dating apps. I don't want to do dating apps. I don't want to date. I don't want to sit there across from somebody at a restaurant on a Friday night at 730 trying to have a conversation when one or both of us knows there's no chemistry here two seconds into it. I don't want to do that. And I don't like uh, going out and meeting people. And we're not even supposed to be going out and meeting people. We're in a pandemic. I also love, by the way, that we're in a pandemic and I'm still whining about dating. What was I reading? I was reading that, uh, was it Eat, Pray, Love? It was one of the, one of the, Liz Gelbart wrote, it was either that book or another book she wrote where she was talking about, she's interviewing people in a war zone and still all they're talking about, my husband just doesn't listen to me, you know, or, uh. Oh, my girlfriend's really getting on my nerves. That's what people kept... That's what they kept kind of going, even though they were in the middle of a war zone. So I guess I joined the ranks of those people. Although, to compare this to a war zone, as my mother will keep saying, well, it could be worse, Josh. They're not dropping bombs on you. So it's not that bad. It could be worse. Can can we just not use it could be worse anymore? I just I'd like to take a uh, uh, a survey from you know let's say a hundred therapists, and I want to I want to know if they were ever in a situation where somebody walks in for the first time and they sit down and they're in tears and they're really sad and they just you know talk about how they're lonely and they're, you know, they they don't feel like there's much hope for the future. And then the therapist says, well, it could be worse. Did they ever have a patient that went, you know, you're right. It could be worse. It's not worse. It's not worse. I'm cured. I'm happy. The hills are alive with the sound of music and all of my neuroses have been put in perspective. It's not like it is that I'm in a holocaust. My problems are manageable. I shall now go forth and find the joy in the little things. That transition kind of into Jesus Christ Superstar there. Stop telling me it could be worse. Here's my other response to the phrase, it could be worse. Well, yes. And it, it's not that it could be worse. It will be worse. It will be worse.
so I'm reveling in the, in the bad now. I'm enjoying the bad now, because when it gets worse, then then I'll say, ah, oh, remember when it you know was only bad. And can I just say this entire conversation feels profoundly Jewish? It really does. And I think there's universality to suffering, so it's not you know relegated to Jews. But the, but this does this is feeling very Jewish. Then, although one could make the argument that any conversation I have is going to have a tinge of Jewish. All right. Well, so I'm depressed. Can't find anyone. Though I'm not looking for anyone, I guess I just I hope that they fall out of the sky and into my garage apartment, and they look around and go, you know, well, forget all of the, uh, forget the money, forget the apartment. Even though I've only known you for nine seconds, after crashing through the roof of your garage, I can see into your soul, and I've fallen in love with you. And we're going to have a relationship in which we never fight. And uh, you focus on being a comedian. And I will never try stand-up. I have my own interests. And our interests will never intersect. And we'll be able to be together but still have separate lives. So that neither of us becomes a leech on the other. <laughs> there's, a, there's a premise for a great... If I were to remake Splash, that's exactly what she'd say as soon as she, as soon as she looked at him. And yeah, we got a thing for mermaids. Mermaids. We got a thing for mermaids. There's something, this magical notion of these mermaids, half humans, half fish. That are always attractive. Always sexy, these mermaids. Rarely do I see mermaid character actors. Where is the Danny DeVito mermaid, I ask you? Why is that not a thing? been listening to a lot of uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber. You know, Andrew Lloyd Webber said that he suffers from depression. And uh, my response to that is, well, I've listened to your music and and uh, I see it. I see it. But that's the irony of depression and of all these emotional problems that people have is that without it, Without that, without that, would the Phantom of the Opera sound like the Phantom of the Opera? Without the depression, it may not, it would, it, perhaps he would not have had the impetus or he would have written it differently. Or if somebody who was not depressed had written it. I'm the Phantom of the Opera. I sing and then I kill. I'm the Phantom of the Opera. I wear a mask and I'm mentally ill. I'm the Phantom, Phantom, Phantom of the Opera. I live in a basement in France. Phantom, Phantom, Phantom of the Opera. I only have one pair of pants. Yeah, see, it, it's just not as good without the depression. <laughs> Nobody wants a happy phantom. Nobody wants that. Well, hey, hey there, I'm the Phantom of the Opera. How are you? How are you? You want to look under the mask? Here you go. 
yeah, I used to think it was gruesome, but then I then uh, I went to a therapist, and the therapist said, well, it could be worse. And I went, you're right. You're right. It could be worse. And now I feel great. I'm a songwriter. I stopped murdering people. Christine decided that she didn't want to fall in love with me. She wanted to go with the other guy because... He has a more symmetrical face, and I accepted it. And now I'm on the dating apps. I'm on Bumble, getting a lot of hits. I'm currently dating a woman named Margaret. She's not an opera singer. Which, you know what, it's good that, it's good that she has different interests. So we're not leeching off of each other. She's a tax preparer. And, you know, things are nice. She'll come watch my opera. I'll go dog sit when she's visiting her sister in Cleveland. It's a nice, good, happy life. And some might say it's boring. And some might say that I'm really not happy. I'm just uh, projecting happiness in order to uh, put on a show. And to those people I say, I'm a happy, happy phantom. And I still only have one pair of pants. Yeah, so that's... So I'm trying to find the the upside in depression. You know, that it's... And maybe the other problem, too, is that by labeling these things, I'm trying to separate them. There's me and my depression, and there's no separation. We're, we are one. We are one. I don't know how that makes me feel better. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't help at all, actually. But, uh, you know. Uh, the, the, I feel like it sh- from a Zen perspective, it somehow should. All right, well, I'm done now.